Whoo, feels good to be back. I'm gonna be spending a lot of time up here over the next couple of weeks, so I think I should step up my steel game a little bit. That should do. What's going on everyone, back with another episode of Stuff and Things. I'm out here at my range today, getting ready to set up to film a ton of gun content. I figured since I'm going to be up here so much lately that I should step up my steel target game a little bit, and that is exactly what I'm doing today. If you've been following the channel for a little while, you will know that I went through a ton of different steel targets from various companies. Basically, if I found something new on the market, I would give it a shot and just test it out for a while. I'm not the hardest person on my steel, it basically just comes up here to the range with me, shoot it with whatever it's rated for, pack it back up and take it home. After a while though, I had found that I needed to start replacing some parts and bolts of various targets that I had. So that would kind of put me on the path of trying something different until I found something that I truly liked and was durable for my standards. That is when I landed on this target that you see behind me here. You may have seen me open this in a video in the past. I've also been shooting this for a couple Sunday gun days now. And out of all of the different steel that I shot, this one seems to be the most bomb proof. I've put hundreds, possibly thousands of rounds on this thing, 9mm, 45, 5.56, basically anything that you've seen a video on and this thing is still looking pretty much brand new other than the paint job. This specific silhouette happens to be made by a company known as Tactical AR500 Targets and now I have a lot more to go along with it. I've got five boxes here next to me, pretty much everything that I need to set up this range for filming the way I do. So I figured I could give you guys a quick unboxing of some of the products that they offer, show you how to set them up, run over some specs. And then if you see something that you are interested in, I also have a discount code for anyone watching and you can find that in the description down below. With that being said, let's get into the first package. Now I'm not gonna be doing this in any particular order, but one thing to keep in mind is that when you're ordering steel targets is that this stuff is heavy. I have close to 400 pounds of steel here with their target systems and then any other accessory that might have came with them. So one thing that's very important about getting these things shipped to your door is actually the packaging that they come in. TAT happens to be fairly close to me here in Pennsylvania. This order went out the next day after I placed it and I actually received these before I even got home. As you can see, there's no real damage to the boxes, but in the past I've seen other shipping methods with steel targets specifically that really didn't work out. These things are obviously heavy and they're bouncing around in here while shipping. So more more often than not, I've gotten targets in the mail where the boxes were completely ripped apart. That is just a minor detail, however, I'm glad that all of these made it to me in one piece and the packaging must be pretty damn good on the inside. On the outside here, you can clearly see the different models that I ordered. Basically just a bunch of silhouettes because that's what I use to film most of my videos with. And proudly found on the outside of the box, obviously these are made here in the USA. This first target happens to be the same as the one you see behind me here, the one that I've shot a bunch in the past. This is what they call their Adaptive Dynamic Platform, or ADAP for short. What's good about this system is that they offer them in a bunch of different options. They are portable, expandable, and they also come in at a pretty decent price as well. There are three different parts to this, and then you just supply your own 2x4s. Let me just show you real quick how easy this is to set up. Just like his friend here, this base goes down first. This obviously accepts a standard 2x4, and there are also two slots up front if you want to mount any kind of target. I have these 2x4s cut to 5 feet. It seems like an appropriate height given my backstop situation. There are two screws in the back that keep this board in place if you want to make it a little bit more permanent. I simply back those out enough to fit the board in place, and then I'll tighten them up if I don't want it to fall out. The next piece is this head that simply slips right over the top. And then of course I have the target itself. On the back of it here you will find some information on what this one is specifically rated for. I will go over that in a second. But then you can also see the mechanism that keeps it in place right here, which is simply a pin. Pull that out. I'll line up this hole on the head of the target. Slip the pin through. And then I'll put this little guy back in place to keep everything secure. It really is as simple as that. As you can see, no tools are required at all. The target is hanging here at a nice angle. That way all the shrapnel is going down into the ground. And this base is also very secure. I've had bases in the past that were made out of just two by fours. 
and they work okay. However, this is just so much easier. When you have an H style base on rocky ground like this, it's often difficult to kind of get it to sit up to a point where you can slap this thing over and over again and it's not gonna fall over. This, as you can see, is very stable. I don't think I have a gun big enough to knock this over just yet. Let's get into a couple more packages. I will set them up and then we can go over the specs and performance that these things can actually stand up to. So here is the current lineup behind me. My mini Magnum Target got a friend and they also got two parents to go along with them. As you can see, that was super easy to set up. I can also break these down just as easily and throw them back in my car to head out of the mountains. You may think that four targets like this would be enough. However, I have one more to show you guys and this one is the one that I am most excited about. This base is a little bit bigger. Alright guys, here we have the finished setup and I am excited to put some rounds down range onto these things. I specifically order these targets to all be rifle rated, that way when I come up here and I'm shooting video, I don't have to worry about the calibers that I'm shooting and pairing them with specific targets. I typically don't shoot anything over a 5.56 or maybe a 308. so as of now everything here can handle those rounds, but if I want to bump up to something bigger, heavier hitting, these targets specifically are going to do a very good job at taking those blows. So all of these ADAP target systems here, I have the two thirds, two of them on this side, and then the full size one and one. All of these targets are in their Magnum line and they are made out of half inch AR-550 steel. While the company name is Tactical AR-500 targets, they make targets that are a lot stronger than AR-500 steel. All of the targets that I've used in the past were only AR-500 and they did a good job. Like I said, I'm really only shooting smaller calibers from nine millimeter up to about 5.56. However, if I want to shoot anything bigger at these Magnum targets, these things can take pretty much anything that you throw at them. The AR-550 is actually the same steel that they use to make their 50 BMG targets. I obviously don't have anything that shoots 50 BMG or none that you guys have seen yet, but until I get a chance to film a video with a gun that shoots something like that, I'm going to throw the biggest, heaviest, fastest rounds that I can at these things and really put them to the test. One very important thing to note about these targets, as you can see, I set them all up with no tools required. They're all self-contained in their own stands with just a two by four, the head and the target itself. And the way that this head is designed, you can see that there is minimal contact between the target itself and the two by four. They really just swing on this pin here. And as you can see, including the dueling tree, they are all at a nice angle. That way everything is fragmenting down towards the ground. Because of the minimal contact between the target and the base itself, this will also allow the round to strike the target and then rock backwards, making it even safer so that no shrapnel is gonna be flying back at you. Because there's a lot of steel here with only one point of contact, these plates are gonna resonate a lot louder than anything that I've shot before. For myself, when shooting gun videos and filming them, there's kind of a happy medium. I've had targets in the past that when you shoot them, it sounds like you're shooting a steel frying pan. And then I've also had another target that you shoot it and it rings out for like a minute and a half. These two third size targets, I already know I like the sound of them. The original paint on the new ones will kind of deaden the sound of the ring until they're actually broken in. But I know for a fact that these do sound good on video. But hey, if you're not recording yourself shooting and putting it up on YouTube like this, it doesn't really matter, does it? So if you want targets that are going to be very loud and that will resonate and you can hear from almost half a mile away, these bigger guys are gonna be your targets. TAT is actually one of the sponsors of the Carry Trainer S12 event, which you guys have seen me cover in the past. So I have shot these bigger size targets with both nine millimeter and 5.56. And I'm telling you, if you want an audio and visual representation of your shots landing on target, 
these are gonna be the targets for you. Down on the end here, I also have one of their hostage target setups. This is a simple bracket that bolts right to the head of the ADAP system, and then as you land shots, this paddle will obviously swing to the other side just like the dueling tree. It's a fairly simple and clean setup. These are also removable. This plate right here is actually 3 8 inch, whereas this is half inch. This will allow it to swing a little bit easier when you're hitting it with smaller rounds like 9 millimeter. However, this is still AR 550 steel, so it is rated up to a 556. Now, speaking of things that swing, let's move over to the dueling tree. So here I have their rifle dueling tree, which means this thing is carbine rated. These are 3 8 AR 550 steel, just like the hostage paddle. And there are a lot of things that I like about this system as opposed to some others out there. As you saw me set this up, this thing is completely self-contained. If I wanted to, I could pick this entire frame up and move it wherever I wanted out here on my range. These paddles are also removable, super easy, just like the hostage targets. So if I'm shooting some soft hitting handgun ammo at this, chances are it's not gonna be able to move this hefty plate. Like I mentioned, this is also at an angle to fragment everything down towards the ground for safety. So because of that, you're going to need something that has enough power to flip this all the way around to the other side. Because these are removable, I can simply swap these paddles out for a pistol paddle. That'll make the weight a lot less and then I should have no problem with some 147 grain 9 millimeter to flip these things around. Once I get into testing these in the future, I'm going to have to run different ammo through here and see what actually has the power to move these rifle paddles. And then one more thing and probably most important is that a lot of companies out there sell these trees. If you're buying one to specifically shoot rifle ammo at it, you gotta make sure that this is rifle rated as well. There are companies that sell rifle trees, however, they overlook the fact that you're gonna be hitting shots right on the front plate. As of right now, when I'm filming this video, TAT is the only company that makes their front frame of their dueling trees out of AR 500 steel. These paddles are 550, the frame is 500, so this is basically the same hardness of steel that other companies are making their normal plates out of. If this was a softer steel like a lot of the competitors, any kind of shot you land on here, more than likely is just gonna punch right through. This, however, is at a nice 45 degree angle if you're shooting on it directly from the front, so any shot is gonna ricochet right off the back and go into your backstop. There are a lot of people out there trying to get into the steel target game, but as you can see, there was a lot of time, thought, and effort put into this system. This wasn't just something that happened overnight, it's super well executed, and I'm excited to start shooting this thing. So there you guys have it, the newest additions to my range. I'm obviously gonna move these things around and set them up in specific areas depending on how I'm shooting and what I'm filming. One thing to keep in mind when shooting steel like this is that you have to be at an appropriate distance based off of the round that you're shooting. If I'm shooting a 5.56 five, round at any of these targets here, I'm obviously gonna wanna be about 100 yards away. There are recommended distances for a bunch of different calibers, so if you guys wanna check out any of that information, I will leave that in the description down below. Also, if you want any more information on these, they have great write-ups about every single one of their products on their site so you can find that in the description down below as well. If you get on there and find something that you like be sure to use code TALENTSI at checkout and you will get 10% off your entire order. If you've never shot at steel before but you have the place to do it I would highly recommend picking up a target. It honestly makes shooting so much more fun because you get that instant gratification whenever you're hitting any of these targets. If you do shoot steel and you have any of these TAT targets let me know in the comments down below. Maybe share some of your experiences with some of the people who are watching so they know that they're getting a quality product. I've been using this one down on the end here for a while now and I've had no issues at all. And now that I've got four more of their systems, I don't think I will need to be replacing any of these targets anytime soon. If you're new to this channel and you want to see me shoot these things up, make sure you click subscribe and turn notifications on. I make new videos every week and I'm about to film a Sunday gun day with my first time shooting at all of these new targets. That will be coming out this Sunday and that is going to be all for today. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.